Okay, so we have this uh, Yamaha drive here. It's all dressed up with chrome and fender, fender flares and nice tires and wheels and stuff. Back seat. Complaint is, step on the pedal, does nothing. Keys on. So what I've done so far is I've, I've tested the solenoid, tested the stop switch. Everything's okay there. So the next thing we got to do is gotta test the battery. Wow, look at how dirty it is in here. Let's get our meter. We'll test the battery. I'm gonna try to show you guys this. Okay, so load it up. It's just above 11. Release it. It's just above 12. So battery checks out. So the next thing I like to do on these is there's a couple of fuses on these, system fuses. There's one here, which is typically a 10 amp. We'll open this up. Oh, this is a 15 amp. Should be a 10. It's not charred. It's not broken. You can test them with the meter. Well, that one looks good, and there's also a smaller micro fuse, which whoever thought of these, or thought, where is it? Here, whoever thought this was a good idea. This is a usually a seven amp, or a three amp, uh, four amp. This fuse is good, nonetheless. Camera doesn't want to focus, but that fuse is good. So we'll put it back in. Now what I'm going to do is jump it out. Oh, look at that. Nothing. Okay, so that tells me it could be brushes on the starter generator. So to figure that out, we roll the starter generator a little bit. And try it again. And we have nothing. Okay, so that tells me we're not getting power to the solenoid. Even though we have a good battery, we're still not getting power to the solenoid. Here's if I take... I grab these. Oh, oh, look at that. That's loose. That could be our problem. See, how's this one here? That one's nice and tight. But this one's loose. This could be our problem. So I'm going to twist it and squeeze it. Okay, so we got a click from the solenoid. Let's twist it again. There we go. There's our problem. So what we're going to do is we're going to change this. No, actually we're going to clean this. We'll clean this, clean this. We might as well clean this one while we're at it too. Look at this one is loose. It came right off. Okay, let's clean those terminals and we should be back in business. We're just going to do it right out here in the driveway. Clean this up. This positive terminal is just not tight enough. And it's dirty, so that's our problem. So you can see how such a simple, a big deal, a big problem can quickly turn into a simple fix. But this would have had you chasing if you didn't if you don't pull the terminals apart. If you don't pull the battery apart, clean it. And make sure all the fuses work. You, you know, do a, a couple of things to test to see where the problem is. You'll be chasing it. There we go. This battery has seen better days for sure. Tighten down. These are 12 millimeter on the Yamaha's, the Yamaha factory connections. 12 mil. Okay. All right, we're good and tight. We should start. Okay, we're good. Awesome. It's an easy fix. So yeah, I just spoke with the customer about this cart. Uh, they want to do a new battery because I did advise them that this could happen again because it did happen as I was loading it on the trailer. 
so we're going to have to change the battery out because the terminals on it are not that great. I'll put new terminals on both sides, negative and positive, to eliminate that as a possible issue. Uh, he, he was okay with it, so he said, let's put a new battery in, I'll change the terminals, and yeah, that'll be it, pretty much. This will be done. So let's get to it. Okay. Oh, those are wore out. 10 millimeter ain't taking them off. They're typically 10 millimeter. Let's see if we're going to be able to get these off without breaking them. Hmm. I don't know. Well, maybe. This one's loosening up. Okay. This one here. Ah, oh, okay. See if I have any new ones, we'll replace these. bit of preventative maintenance goes a long way with this stuff. I won't have this problem. Okay, so see, even though I tighten these, see how they didn't stick. Because the terminal on the battery post is wore out. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to cut all these wires and replace the terminals and put new ring terminals on the smaller stuff. Here's my trusty left out in the rain cable cutters. Just going to cut this off here. We'll cut this one. Actually, I'll grab it and pinch it up. See, look at that. That broke right off. positive and the negative will be fairly straightforward cables look good as far as there's no corrosion that's made its way up into the the sheathing they all look good so we didn't we caught it right in time I think I think there we go okay now it's in got to slip into its slot. Okay, so now we get the positive terminal off. Positive terminal on most batteries is larger than the negative, so you have to spread them just a little bit to get them to drop on. And then we'll always do the positive terminal first, at least I do. I always do the positive side. That grabbed nicely. Okay, next we have our negative terminal. The sky's getting dark. Okay, good and tight. Now, what I like to do is Keep the positive terminal of the cart separate from the positive of the light kit, if, if equipped. It just keeps things separate. It's uh, easier to diagnose in the future if there's any issues. Oh, I hope the rain holds off because it looks like it's going to just dump on me any minute. I <laughs> hope not. Positive on before we... ground up. Okay. Put you there. Put you there. See, and if you don't hook up this secondary ground wire, which is the basically the cart system ground, this is the ground for the starter generator. So this one here is valuable and important, but it's uh, it's this one here, this little one that comes off and it has a pigtail on it. So if this ever becomes unplugged, your cart will never start. So that's something to always check, and uh, be sure that that it's that that is connected. Okay, take that other side off. Mm 
put it on with this. Because like I said, I like to keep the ground cart separate from the light kits and such. Now I'm going to see if I have any of these. I don't think I do, but I'm going to check anyway. Nuts, but I don't have shouldered nuts, so this will have to do. If I can get this one off. So it's worth doing. It's worth doing correctly. Or worth doing right, however you want to say it. The most important thing is make sure the batteries are secured. Final step. Always spray them. Could save you all that trouble. Make sure it cranks every time. Okay, well, there you go guys, that was the problem from the beginning, bad battery connection will cause a world of problems if we don't check them, keep them clean and maintain them. Alright, thanks for watching.